Yeah, it's different from a ring. Uh, let me start off with a cautionary tale uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard of. The person that tries to catch multiple rabbits catches neither. So I've never caught any rabbits in my life, um, but I can imagine it must be really difficult. But I think the point is that the rabbit symbolizes our goals, right? So to achieve our goals, we have to focus our efforts. And if we spread ourselves out too thin, we are all guilty of that. We think we can achieve a lot more. I mean, it's good to have ambition, but sometimes we spread ourselves out too thin that we end up not achieving our goals or end up with a poor, poor uh, performance. Okay, let me share to you guys today my journey as a Muay Thai fighter in Hong Kong and the lessons I've learned along the way when it came to focusing my efforts, learning to trust the process despite the failures and setbacks. Okay, so some of you guys might be wondering what Muay Thai is. Muay Thai is a martial art and sport that originates from Thailand uh, and involves punching, throwing elbows, throwing knees, it follows the same format as a boxing fight, so you have rounds, and the way you would win is by executing those techniques effectively against your opponent, or by getting the knockout, I mean, which is pretty self-explanatory, or the technical knockout, in which one of the persons uh, is not deemed uh, able to continue. So, you might be wondering why anybody would want to do this. Uh, my grandma has, you know, tried to stop me for a long time and still doesn't like me competing but for me I find that it's one of the most one of the more pure forms of competition it's literally just you and your opponent um, both of you are trained both of you are testing your skill set but if all things equal physicality skill it's just down to your both your willpower who can impose their will and what it means to me is that when you're in the ring and you put yourself in that kind of uncomfortable situation, you really figure out what you're made of and what, what you are. You get to truly find out who you are. So a bit crazy, I know. Um, you might be wondering how I got into Muay Thai. I was always big into video games. Uh, one day, a friend and I were playing Fight Night on the PlayStation. I don't know if any of you guys know that. Uh, we both assumed it was pretty straightforward. So long story short, I ended up training at a gym. And the instructor was like, hey, come over here. Uh, it's time for you to hit the mitts for two minutes. And I didn't say this, but I was like, two minutes is so short, like such a short time. But that's when my assumptions met reality. So 30 seconds in, I'm like gassed. Like I didn't expect it to be physically demanding that, you know, by I was hooked. Um, I figured out it was for me because I love the competitive nature of it and how physical it is. So fast forward, I ended up uh, at a gym called Versus. It's where I'm still at right now. And this is where I really developed as a fighter and also as a person. This is where I met my coach, my training partners, my friends. These people is almost like my second family. Without them, I wouldn't have probably achieved half the things I've achieved to this day. So I didn't do this alone. But it was around the same time I was in uni, a second year. Uh, and I also applied for the Hong Kong Championships for the first time. So I was also working part time at a restaurant in the evenings, training, coaching. You can see where this is going. Too many rabbits. So there's this week where I had my exams, exam week, and at the same time, the I had the fight on the weekend. So the way it works is when you compete, let's say I fight at the 54 kilogram bracket, you have to make the weight the day before. So it's fair, right? I mean, the, the height will vary, but weight wise, both the, the fighters are the same. So the whole week I'm dieting. Uh, and finally, like on Friday, which was the day of the weigh in, which was in the evening, I also had an exam that day, so you can see uh, it's not going good. I went to the exam center, dehydrated, hungry. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking. I got in, I sat down, I 
looked at the papers and I can even remember my name. I was just thinking about food, water, food, water. That's all depression. I left pretty early. People must have thought, oh my God, he must be really smart. I wasn't very smart. So anyways, I rushed back to the gym to drop some more of the weight. And then we were a bit late to the venue, so we went to the venue. I put on the sweatsuit. It's kind of like a hot jacket, and the pants. I ran around the venue, tried to sweat as much of the, the weight off. And finally, went back up, stepped on the scale, no clothes in front of everybody. I missed weight. So I messed up my exams. I messed up the fight. Then the next day, I caught up with my girlfriend then, and things didn't work out. So it was a really tough week, guys. Very, very tough week, I tell you. So I took some time to think about what was important to me and really prioritize what I thought was more important. So I decided to give up school, to leave school. I didn't like the idea because I thought I'm, I don't like the idea of quitting, but I felt more strongly about competition and I figured I was still young, I needed to do this now. So I focused all my efforts into competition I fought more and over the next maybe three or four years, I was struggling a little bit. Uh, I would win some fights, I would lose some fights. Some fights I think I've lost because maybe a little bit biased because I'm an ethnic minority. A couple of times I've broken my hand and it was a little bit tough because it took time off from training and fighting. So there was a point where I was questioning myself, did I do the right thing? Did I? Did I um, make the right decision? I was starting to have doubts because I wasn't getting the right, um, the right results despite focusing all my efforts. Luckily, my luck started to change one year. And I think it was 2017, which was the first year I became the Hong Kong champion. The first non-local Hong Kong champion, which I was very proud. You guys don't have to clap. Um, then the next few years I defended it, a lot of doors opened up from there and I felt like that validated all the effort I put in because it was so tough, like at home, my grandma would ask, why are you still fighting? Why did you lose? It's like, I, how do I explain that? And yeah, a lot of doors opened up, making me three times Hong Kong champion and that really cemented my reputation in the local scene at least that I was decent, I was good. Then I wanted to take it to the next level uh, to compete overseas in Thailand, which I did. Then you guys know what happened in 2020, uh, COVID happened, right? So that stopped my competition for a bit, put two years back. So I started again last year, was in a good role, then had to stop again because of some neck injury. So. I'm better now, so I'm gonna probably start competing again. But as you can see, the journey hasn't been very smooth, okay? And there are moments where I was thinking, I'm not sure if I did the right decision, but I really had to trust the process. So after a decade of competing and fighting, a couple of things I take away. One is that whatever you do, you have to focus your efforts, especially fighting or competition, you have to plan your training, plan your rest. That means missing parties, missing this, focusing yourself on the training. Second is, even if you do that, sometimes you might not even get the right result. And you have to trust the process, right? That's what I'm saying. And even if you do the right things, you might still get the failures, right? And you guys can apply these lessons in anything else in life. It doesn't have to be always about fighting. Be it you start a new business, follow a new passion, you know, change careers, that's your journey. But remember, even if you focus all your efforts into doing so, you might not get the right result in the first place. And you really have to trust the process along the way. Uh, thank you.